What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet, and look what Microsoft sent me to check out and to review. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's uneventful. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I guess this is a carrying case, so I guess that's the point. There it is. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the price of this thing. This is a hundred and fifty dollars with the controllers and that makes it three times as expensive as any other controller that you can get even the steam controller is only 50 bucks so what a price tag on this monstrosity so the big question i asked myself when they announced this thing is who is this controller for and obviously it's for the guy who loves xbox one or loves pc gaming or loves their steam link and wants to connect this to it and have all the features that this thing has built in but there's actually a second group of people a lot of people don't consider there are a lot more disabled gamers out there than you would think and i've met quite a few of them and they definitely will take advantage of special features such as extra buttons in the back and the ability to remap on your console in fact, I'm kind of disappointed that PlayStation has not created an offering like this to make it more accessible for disabled players like my friend Tyler, who prefers Xbox One over PlayStation 4 because he likes the voice commands that were built into Connect more than he likes the voice commands that are available on PlayStation 4. And Tyler, if you want one of these, let me know. We'll try to hook you up. Now, the first thing I notice is this really weird D-pad, and I don't know how I feel about it. I, I will definitely test it out. But apparently, if you decide you don't like it, they included the regular D-pad as well, so you can just swap them in and out. Now, this just pops right off. I don't know if that's ever going to be a problem, how easily that pops off, but time will tell. Now, just like the Steam controller, this has buttons in the back as well. Uh, the Steam controller has, I think, only two. This one does have four. And man, that feels so much nicer in my hand and so much more natural. Uh, that's eight total buttons right here at your fingertips with your fingers on the dual sticks. So I don't know why you would ever need more than eight buttons. Maybe you would, though. Now, I noticed this when I was messing with them earlier. Uh, these do kind of flip out a little bit, uh, but I think it's so that you can easily remove them. So if you don't want to have these on there, or you just don't have a couple of them on there, you can do that. But if you don't want these on here, why did you buy the Elite controller? And as I was putting that back, I discovered that it's actually magnetized back there to make getting them in and keeping them in a little easier. That is actually... That is a nice touch. I like that. Now, as a lark, I pulled on this, and look at this. That pops right off, too, but it is magnetized, just like in the back, so that's going to stay on pretty well. And then I looked at the pads that they sent uh, that come with it, and they, they do not... They are actually very different from the original pad. Obviously, here's the original one that is concave and kind of short. Here's another concave one that is a little longer. Uh, so if you want to have an actual joystick experience, you can achieve that. Then, here's a rounded tip one as well. And then I presume one of these is a slightly longer rounded tip one. This is the app that you use to do all of the customization. There's obviously button mapping, um, which I think should be standard with basically every controller. I don't know why it's not, but... Uh, here's advanced button mapping, left thumbstick sensitivity, trigger sensitivity, vibration. Um, you can even turn up the brightness on the uh, the LED there on the on the Xbox button. That's kind of cool. And then here is slot one and two. Uh, and then I realized uh, on the controller there's a little slider that says slot one or two. So apparently this thing will store up to two different controller settings. So if there's two games you're playing all the time, you can easily swap back and forth. That's actually kind of nice. So overall, first impressions. Well, my first impression is that it's prohibitively expensive at $150. I mean, this is a nice upgrade to the Xbox One controller, um, but man, does it cost a lot. Uh, it feels nice and sturdy. There's a lot of cool features. It does a lot of cool stuff. But for more than twice the price, that is going to be difficult for a lot of people to pay. And what's frustrating about this is a lot of the things that a lot of the people that would really need this, such as disabled players, they can often have the least amount of money to spend. So the people who need this most will be the least likely to be able to afford it. I set this controller down several times when I was filming uh, capturing the Xbox. And if you set this thing down, these buttons in the back absolutely will trigger. Um, because it rests right on them. 
So that was a huge pain. I accidentally opened an app that I didn't want to open because of that. So you can't put it face down either uh, because obviously that's going to trigger the thumbs and the other buttons. So I don't know how you're supposed to set this thing down, but I really like it. I, I think I really like it. My first impression is so much more positive than for the Steam controller. And when my Steam Link comes in this weekend, this is the controller I'll be hooking up to it, not the Steam controller. Because I really hope to spend a lot of time with this one, and I'll probably be playing Halo 5 with this one as well. Is this controller for everyone? No. No, I wouldn't say 1 in 10, 1 in 100 people should be buying this. This is probably for people who already customized their controllers a little bit anyway, and this is going to make customization way, way easier. But overall, uh, even with those shortcomings, I think it's probably one of the best controllers I've ever held, and I can't wait to experiment more with it. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this review useful, because I certainly found it fun to do. Thank you again, Microsoft, for sending me this to review. I probably would have never purchased it otherwise, because it is very, very expensive. Uh, but now that I have it, I'm glad to have it. If you haven't noticed, though, I've already taken off those two uh, wing buttons because they're so easy to hit. That annoys me. But maybe this will turn out to be something I can't live without. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again soon. And seriously, Microsoft. Allow button mapping. PlayStation 2. It's just common decency.